Hi everyone, oh, I'm out of breath. That was Rosé Etude number one on the Jinbao Paperclip Contrabass Clarinet. So the biggest update is I finally got my hands on a new mouthpiece. This was played on a Phobes San Francisco, which has been generously lent to me by a good friend, Jeremy Diffie, who we'll hear from in, in just a moment. Jeremy plays all sorts of crazy cool instruments, including woodwinds, and he also has a straight LeBlanc USA uh, down to low E flat, which we'll hear from in just a minute. So a couple of other small updates. Uh, I took this paperclip back to Amanda Morrison to just double check the double register mechanism uh, was closing exactly correctly. Um, we also adjusted a little bit of the um, key work. I don't know how well or not you'll be able to see this, but the A key, you can see here, it curves sort of inwards a lot more. Before it was almost straight down and it was impossible to kind of roll from A to F sharp. So we've just bent that across and now it's really, really good. Um, I've also been experimenting a bit more with reeds and ligatures. Um, Jeremy lent me, in addition to his phobes, where is it? He lent me a Vendoran Optimum. I don't know if you can see that, which is very nice. It's got the two vertical rail uh, plate in it. Um, it'd be interesting to try the other plates, you know, the four dots and the horizontal plates. Um, but for now, it's got the, the two vertical. Um, rails. That is okay, but it kind of muffles the sound a little bit too much for me. Um, so the current setup that I'm using, I'll just grab this quickly to show you. This is the Phobes San Francisco with a Rovna 4RS Dark uh, Contra mouthpiece, uh, Contra ligature. So that is my go-to at the moment. It's still a little bit unstable in sections, um, particularly D to E over the break, which is where that double register mechanism um, changes over. So apart from that, it's playing pretty well. Another thing that I'll show in just a moment is a bit of a tuning uh, test. I just popped on a TE tuner or tonal energy tuner. Um, and it plays mostly in tune in the upper register, but down low it's really flat. Um, and I think that's similar to actual LeBlanc paper clips. Um, another kind of exciting thing that I've got coming up, I'm taking it to a clarinet choir rehearsal this weekend. And I believe at that rehearsal there will be an actual uh, LeBlanc paper clip. So I'm keen to put it up against that and try it out. We didn't really test the, the tuning against uh, Jeremy's straight LeBlanc because it's not really a fair comparison. It's a completely different design. Um, it's not an apples to apples comparison, it's apples to oranges. So I really want to put it up against an actual paperclip uh, to test the tuning, but I'll show you the, the TE tuner uh, result anyway. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty flat down low. And I actually realized as well, if I take this mouthpiece, so this is the Phobes. This is the stock mouthpiece that it came with. 
And if I line it up, you can see that the phobes is quite a bit longer. Quite a bit longer. Um, so I don't know if that has something to do with it being really flat down low. Um, I tried going back to the stock mouthpiece, but it's basically unplayable. I, I can never go back after playing the phobes for a while. So I'll show you a clip now of Jeremy playing. He has lent me the phobes because he's actually got something better, which I think is quite interesting. I'll not spoil it. I'll let him tell you a little bit more about it. <laughs> How does it feel? It's feeling good. It's feeling good. I found the right read to go with it. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's feeling good. Um, it's really interesting to, to play this compared to a straight one just to listen to the difference in the body of the sound. Um, right. Um, how, does, yeah. how does the key work feel to you? The key work's feeling pretty good now. Um, the, now that you've... Um, you just needed a setup. Had a look. Yeah. yeah, setup definitely helped. And changing that, fixing that... That register mechanism change over yeah. definitely like getting over the red the break is no problem now yeah and yeah. and fixing that, that, a, that key. A, a key adjustment just moving over a bit a little bit has really made a big difference yeah um, yeah. Um, yeah that would have been impossible the other way yeah. I think I just like to have that that slight angle a bit yeah, there. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I can get it a little higher. And it's a lot of um, just getting in the right voicing. Yeah. The right tongue position. The tongue positioning yeah. and how much mouthpiece is in your mouth is definitely making a big yeah. a big difference. Um, and what what kind of mouthpiece is this? Are you playing? Oh gosh. Oh, Whoa. So this is a. Uh, sorry, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> this is a Sios uh, mouthpiece um, that I just got recently. 3D printed, right? Yeah, 3D printed. I had been using um, uh, the Phobes, um, which is which is great and uh, really great sounding mouthpiece. Um, I've got this this Sios now, which is 3D printed. Now the only thing that it doesn't fit in your neck. So yeah, full disclosure: we are using the neck from my um, uh, Vito slash LeBlanc half and half uh, bastardized. Contra bass clarinet. Yeah. Um, but it seems to work really. It fits fine in in, in the receiver here. Yeah. Um, and it means I can use this mouthpiece. Um, whereas the Phobes fit in both of them, it seems. But so yeah. I guess the tolerances are just a little bit different for this mouthpiece. Yeah. It's um, just cork on the receiver yeah. versus the. Yeah. This one has these uh, O rings. Um, I'll take it out for a second and see. Yeah. 
and that's the SIOS ligature mm. too. So this has these O-rings yeah. rather than cork. 3D printed. Very so, cool. Yeah. It's a little bit slimmer in body if you compare this to like this, the actual out, outer Let's see if I can the do outer uh, yeah, you can see it's a lot slimmer if you do it to the side, yeah. You can see this tapers in quite a bit. Yeah. See? Um, and yeah, I'm just using the ligature that they use, which which I, seems to work really well for me. Um, just slides it on. It slides on and holds it well, but comes off nice and easy when I need it to. Um, and I find that the, uh, the 3D printed material has this kind of cool zing to it. Um, it's got body steel, but... It's got these these upper partials in it that are kind of I'm really digging. Um, so it's a bit brighter, it's mm, a bit punchier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's put this back on. Yeah, we'll just chuck Are you this down on the stand. That yeah, way or the other yeah, way? yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Cool. Contralto. <laughs> Regular bass. Okay. Uh, contra bass. So the top joint is like an L, the Blanc USA. Yeah. And the bottom joint is something different. Yeah, one, uh, one of them's a Vito and one of them's a Blanc. The top says Le Blanc. Um, the... The bottom, I believe, is Vito. And in fact, the bell, I thought it said Vito, could be wrong. But yeah, so it's a half LeBlanc, half Vito. Acoustically, because of the shape of the body, I'd say straight verse. I'd say bit. that has something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. maybe uh, Jason or one of the other players can yeah contribute to that. Kind of compact kind of sound though. Yeah. pretty much it next episode i'll have a little bit more info after the clarinet choir rehearsal and i also want to catch up with amanda morrison as well and get her thoughts her take on it um she's told me a few things in person but i want to get her on on camera on film so you guys um keep asking questions about you know the repairer's perspective so we'll, we'll hear that next time any other questions, comments, queries, just let me know. Happy to answer specific things and I'll see you next time.